most of that was in radio. Uh, I basically, in 2001, launched a country radio station and absolutely fell in love with the artists and the format, created a, a touring opportunity. I was always that guy. I didn't have the, the luxury of going to college. It wasn't in my cards. Uh, but I've always been that kid that's asked questions. I was that, why? How come? Why? How come, kid? Uh, I've been blessed to have some great mentors. So I ended up starting something. I always tell people, I'm usually not the first to start something, but I'm usually the first to finish it. There are a lot of great starters, and a lot of you are great starters, and a lot of you can sit there and go, wow, I started this, I started this, I started this, I started this. I want to challenge you to start becoming great finishers, even if it's just one thing at a time. I'm actually going, and I think David's going too, to the START conference, uh, a gentleman by the name of John Acuff, who is a, a brilliant uh, I want to call him a comedian, but he's not a comedian. He's just he's just this guy that says things different than other people. But you can find him at John Acuff, J O N A C U F F dot com, and uh, he teaches people how to go from average to awesome. And I think that's what you guys are in pursuit of every day. When I started this thing called the Nashville U Radio Tour, the idea, the concept behind it was, is that I had this little station in California. All these artists were coming out, but I never got to see them play. They would kind of show up hit the, you know, play their three songs in the conference room, and they would never get in front of an audience. And I was like, why don't you just go find out if they suck or not by putting them in front of people? And they're like, well, you know, we need to get them paid, we need this, just a whole bunch of we need, we need, we need, we need. So I went out and created and fulfilled that need and ended up launching this acoustic radio tour. First act I took out was a guy named Josh Turner. Second act was Sugar Land. And there was Little Big Town and Rodney Atkins and so on and so forth. So I was able to make my name in that space. Scott Borchetta then hired me when he started Big Machine Records. Then they gave me a 16-year-old at the time who wanted to learn radio, taught her radio. Her name was Taylor Swift. I went on to be her manager for the first two and a half years of her career. So got here, moved the family out here in 2008, and started consulting labels, working on artist development, getting people ready for radio. I feel this whole town right now is built on teaching the songwriters, but nobody was teaching the artist how to be artist. It's like we work on voice lessons, we work on guitar lessons, we work on writing songs. Every weekend there's a freaking songwriter's workshop of something going on, but there was nothing teaching you how to be artists. There was nothing teaching you how to set up your business. Even though we have some music business schools, a lot of the stuff that they're teaching is great in theory, but it's not practical. And your job is to get as much practical and theory as you possibly can. I'm not debunking school at all. I would have loved to have been able to go to college. Unfortunately, at the time, I chose drugs. So I was high during the time that most of you were in school. I'm 21 years sober now for a reason. But had I been given that opportunity, get as much education as you possibly can. Because that's the things that they can't take from you. They can't take experience, and they can't take education. So get as much of that as you possibly can and then incorporate that into your world. So Doak and Will and I met one day. Doak and I were at, at an event, and it's funny how Doak and I met. I was, a lot of people want to get discovered. Sometimes you can get discovered for the wrong reasons. Doak and I were sitting outside a restaurant. There was a, I was sitting outside, minding my own business, and I heard somebody singing Jolene by Dolly Parton, and she was just, butchering the heck out of this song. And I knew that this gal had brought all these kids up from Georgia to perform. And what was happening is they were just basically performing in front of each other, which they actually could have done in Georgia. But, you know, it's kind of one of the things that goes on here. People pay you to get on stage and do some things. So I said to this person that I was meeting with, I said, watch. I said, I'm going to walk inside. This girl's going to be dressed to the nine, and her mom's going to be videotaping her. And we walked in, and that's what was happening. She had this green sequin dress, and Mom was there videotaping, baby, baby, you know, doing that whole little thing. And I said, she's going to get discovered for all the wrong reasons. Her mom is going to put this on YouTube, and this girl's going to get butchered by other young girls, because that's what young girls do to other young girls, is they beat the crap out of them mentally. And it's no fault for this girl, but that's kind of what her mom did. And I said, somebody's got to step up and start telling these people that they're damaging 
their kids' opportunities on things like that. Just because it's cute for the family doesn't mean it's cute for the rest of the world. So be careful, parents, on what you put on YouTube because it's a digital footprint for your child. My kid did this funny thing with the hose one day, but at some point he'll want to get a job. So I chose to keep it with the family and not post it on YouTube. So every performance you do doesn't need to be YouTube performance quality, okay? One of the things that I want to talk about today a little bit is I want to talk about our social networks. We have never, there's never been a better opportunity to be in the music business than there is today. Because today you can wake up in the morning and write it, you can record it, you can do a video on it, you can get it up on iTunes. You, they're the, the gatekeepers in charge of the consumer. A lot of those gates have been removed. The problem is, is that it's very loud out there right now. You are in a town, you are here trying to stand out amongst thousands of talented people. If you think about it, walk up and down the streets, everywhere you go, somebody's playing, somebody's singing, and they all want what you want. So what are you going to do to make yourself stand out amongst these thousands? Sing better? I don't know, I've seen a bunch of great singers on TV lately. Play guitar better? Don't know, I've seen a bunch of guitar players. What you're going to do is you're going to show them that you are a business, that you treat it like a business, that you act like a business, and you can control that. You don't have to have a high-powered attorney. You don't have to have a high-powered manager. A lot of those guys can't get their phone calls answered right now. You know, there used to be a time when if you were with a certain label or a certain attorney or a certain agency, that kind of opened up some doors for you. But when everybody kept losing money, those doors got smaller and smaller and smaller. So what you're wanting to do right now is figure out how you can walk in and say, okay, this is what I've done. This is what I'm doing. This is how I become a great partner for you. And those are the things that we want to teach you. How many people here have a website? Okay. How many people here have their Twitter? Okay. How many people here have their Facebook? And how many people here have a YouTube? Pretty much all you need to get started right now. There's Tumblr and there's Instagram. And as we figure out ways to get Instagram, now that they're doing video to drive people. Those of you, let me ask this, how many people have signed up on my website and received the video series, Seven Keys for Increasing Your Odds? Okay, uh, if you haven't, my Twitter is at Rick Barker Music, and my website is musicindustryblueprint.com. Go to it, you're gonna see a little video, I'm gonna say hey, and then I'm gonna tell you, I'll send you some stuff. And go ahead, I get, do a free video series that I've just redone. Those of you that have been on the list for a while, shoot me an email. Let me get you the link so you can go to it. The key is that I've been getting a lot more education myself. I've been involved with a couple companies. I've been working really hard on becoming a better speaker. And being able to, as those of you who know me know that I can talk and talk forever. So I've been trying to work on getting it down in newer videos to where it's more important. The things that I teach you, I'm practicing myself. You see, in my business, I'm the artist. And the songs that I create are my videos teaching you the business. So when I say I need you to tweet, it's because I tweet. When I say I need you to post on Facebook, I post on Facebook. I don't call you every day and go, hey, do you want to buy my program? Do you want to become a member? Hey, do you want to buy my program? Hey, do you want to become a member? The same way you should not be in all your communication. Hey, buy my CD. Hey, buy my CD. Hey, buy my T-shirt. Hey, vote for me. Hey, do for me. We hate friends who are like that. So don't be that person is, is kind of what I'm trying to say. So as we narrow these things down, the things that you want to make sure that you're doing is you want to make sure that you're posting things that are engaging. And what I mean by engaging is it starts a conversation. Watch me play at 6 o'clock. That's an action. You're telling people kind of what's going on. Hey, at 6 o'clock, I'm going to be on Facebook answering your questions or talking about the vampire diary or whatever you feel now you're starting to engage. So you want to find times when you can start engaging with your audience. Use Twitter as a quick form of communication to drive them to some place where you can have a longer conversation. Because contrary to what you might think, you cannot build a relationship at 140 characters. And that's all Twitter allows you to do. Once you get to Facebook, it's another place, ultimately where you want to get them is to your website. 
The reason for that is because you own your website. You do not own Twitter. You do not own Facebook. You do not own YouTube, Instagram, Tumblr, and all those places. Reverb Nation. Stop using Reverb Nation as your website. Please. They make it so hard. And I'm a fan of Reverb Nation. Trust me, there's a lot of great features about it. But they make it very hard for me in the industry to contact you. And it should not be that hard. Your focus and your attention should always be to drive people to a location that you control. Ultimately, that's going to be your email list, your community. I want to encourage you to just build communities and communities and communities of people that when you need them to do things for you, they're willing to do that for you. And the only way to do that is to take the time to engage and build these relationships. So I know a lot of us want it to be in a big hurry. We want this to happen. We want that to happen. We're not in a hurry. We're not curing cancer. We're in the music business. Okay? This, if you can do what you love, write music that influences and touches people's lives and make a couple bucks, that's all to you. That's a lot, what a lot of people want. A lot of these rock stars, you'll walk around here and you'll see they picked, they got into this business because they loved music. And they loved playing. Fame came because fame came. They, that's not what they were in search of. Most of the guys you look around started playing music to pick up girls. I mean, and they'll tell you that. Why'd you get in a band? Because chicks like guitar players, you know? I mean, that was just kind of what happened. Now we think that everybody wants to hear our story. Maybe. Thing is, is all the stories are the same. How are you telling it? How are you relating it? How are you getting your message out there that's what's going to make you different? All the movie, movies have horror, love story, drama, action, you know? I guess it would be the same with music, you know? Love songs. They're all kind of the same. We're just learning how to tell it in different ways. And what I want you to focus on doing is being the best that you can be in your community. Right now, your community is your social area, your website and your social sites because you've chosen to leave the community that you lived in. My advice for anybody on the web that wants to come to Nashville, be the best thing in your town first. If you're not the best thing in your town, there's no way you're going to come here and be the best thing because there are a lot of people, you walk up and down the streets, it's funny, a story of, I always tell people, I had a buddy of mine who was a practice player in the NFL. He bounced around from team to team. It was kind of Jack Johnson kind of style. And all his buddies, of course, would get drunk and tell him how great he was. So he's like, dude, I'm moving to Nashville. I'm like, before you pack the truck, come stay with me for a week. Let me take you around. So he was excited until we walked into the first place. That night, Bobby Pinson was playing. <laughs> Bobby had a deal. Bobby's written numerous number one hits. It's like, man, I go, had a deal, lost it. Walk into another place. Guy was shredding on guitar. I said, can't get a deal. This guy had a deal and lost it. This guy, three number ones, can't find a publishing deal. And he goes, all right, I'll be back to visit. He now works for iTunes. But what, what I did was I showed him that, that you being here just because, I'm going to get in trouble because I said something the other day. I think I pissed some people off, but... As you'll see, I kind of just set that down anywhere. No, it's okay. Word? Yeah, no, it's, it's whatever. She's all good. Her eyes poor things. Like, it's going to fall, it's going to fall, it's going to fall. It's all good. So, as most of you will learn, sometimes I get sidetracked, but I will always make it back. If I don't, Doker will bring me back. So, we were at this networking event this week, and, uh, one of the people speaking, and I won't mention her name because she's had a couple hits and she does these songwriting classes and things like that. There was somebody there that was from like the, the city music commission or something like that. And one of the things she said was, she said, listen, she said, I really need, there needs to be more places where the songwriters get paid for singing. And, and I'm cool with that if you bring an audience. But if you're wanting me as a bar owner to pay you to learn how to play, ain't going to happen. You know, it's just not going to happen. And one of the things that I said, I said, I'm really, just because somebody has a guitar and can strum it and sing words does not make them a performer or an artist or a songwriter. And in this town, there's so many people that are disgruntled because they think that if you don't want to play for free, that's cool because somebody else does. And they're going to get, you perform to get better. 
You don't perform to get paid. Perform to get better because when you get better and you can bring an audience, you will get paid. It's amazing how that works. So if you can focus on building your community of people online, that you can get them out to your gigs, if you can show a bar owner or a club owner or this place that, hey, I've got an audience that comes with me, then you'll start getting paid. So don't get, there's a lot of, for the newer folks that are here in town, don't listen a lot to the people who lost their deals. They will bring you down. They are bitter, they're angry, and if they knew what they were talking about, they'd still have a record deal because no one gets dropped if they have fans. We've got plenty of people that have had radio success that no longer have deals. So don't bank everything on that radio success and don't bank everything on just because you get a deal, the hard part's keeping it. It's not getting it and you keep it with fans. So all that we talk about is build your fan base, build your fan base, build your fan base, love the fan base because ultimately you're going to need them to be there for you. So for those of you that are new in town, don't get caught in or sucked into the drama. Okay? It's, it's all over the place. A lot of bitter people here. Next thing you have to be careful for is everyone has worked with Jason Aldean and everyone's worked with Eric Church and everyone's going to tell you how great and beautiful you sound and for some thousands of dollars they can take you in the studio and get your music heard. No. Okay? Most of you, if you don't have anything going on on your social sites, if your website looks like garbage, don't get the doors open for you too fast is what you got to be careful of because what happens is is we're, we're now trained. We learned that Facebook likes can be purchased. We learned that Twitter followers can be purchased. Back when MySpace was around, people were buying friends. And then all of a sudden we were going, wow, these people got all these friends and all these likes and all these followers. But every time they play, like three people show up and I think they're related to them. <laughs> Be careful what you share. The other night I was at the listening room and there was a gal in the front who was with some of the girls that were playing that are Blueprint members and I'm sitting there and I saw this girl so they said, oh, I wrote a song with so-and-so. So, -and -so. so I'm, I'm trained to pull out my phone and go to Twitter and search to see who this person was. She had 279,000 followers on Twitter. She had only tweeted 73 times and she only had four pictures posted. What's the chances that that number is real? So when I went to fakerstatus.people.com, which you can do, and you punch in at so-and-so's followers, turned out that 98% was wrong. So as that might go to a record guy, wow, that's pretty impressive. Once you see that they're BSing at that point, no one wants to invest in a liar. We're in a business. A label to take one song to radio on your behalf at the minimum is a half a million dollars. That's what the investment is going to be into you. So I ask you this, are you a good investment? Most folks here, probably 99% of the room, not yet. Doesn't mean that you can't be. It means that right now you're probably not ready so the cool part is, is you're here finding out what can I do to get ready. And that's what we do. That's what musicstartshere.org does. That's what I do. You know, I'm trying to give you all the tools that you need, but I can't do it for you. You have to want to do it yourself. Sometimes you got to go home and just have a little dose of humble pie and go, man, I probably still need to work on vocal lessons. I still want to be, you know, become master your craft, master your instrument. You know, get good at what it is that you do. But if you get good with an audience, people will overlook the vocal thing. Hint, hint. They will. There's not many people, if you think about it, are great writers, great vocalists, and great instrumentalists. Usually somebody succeeds in one of those areas. Find the area that you're great at. But what you can be great at is telling your story and getting to engage those people. I wish that when I was Dallas's age, and I point out Dallas because I know Dallas, that I had the work ethic that she had towards her music. I had work ethic towards soccer, drinking, and girls. That's where my work ethic was at 15 years old. 
Every time I turn around, she's playing, she's performing. I mean, she's actually a member of the Blueprint, and she's here with her mom taking notes. How many Blueprint members are here? Someone's here, Lily. Okay. On the Music Industry Blueprint, there's a membership site where we have a, the whole business is kind of broken down. We do monthly webinars and things like that. The thing that I love is that people that, that pay to have access to me still come to the free stuff, which is really cool. And I appreciate you guys for doing that because it's just more information that you're able to get. The thing that this business is great of doing right now is weeding out the competition. That's what I love about this business is it helps weed out the competition. So what I want to do is spend the next few minutes giving you some things that you can do with your website, your Twitter, your Facebook, and your YouTube. I've been blessed to have met a young man who has 97,000 Twitter followers, 3% fake on that, just because when you get to that number, you can't catch them all. Uh, also about 55,000 YouTube subscribers. He got this in about a little over a year. His name is Jacob Whitesides. And Jacob was with me last week. And what I told Jacob was, is I said, look, I'm going to teach you how to take that following and convert it into a list. And in the meantime, I want you to share with me everything that you've learned on how to build Twitter and Facebook and YouTube because I want to share that with you guys. So that's what I'm going to do today is give you some of the secrets and some of the things that he shared with me. The key, too, to remember with this, he's homeschooled. He has more time than a lot of you have. Those of you that are in school, I'm going to tell you some of the, the, what this kid does. No two things are alike. You have to take whatever I say and take out the parts that work for you. Also know this, before I get into these numbers and they start blowing your mind. For my females, for whatever reason, it's a lot harder for the girls to get that same kind of activity online as if that it is the boys. And one of the things that we're having to work with him, and I say this out of all due respect, and I hope nobody takes this the wrong way. Most of the girls that communicate back and forth with him right now are the girls that are picked on in high school, they don't have friends, and he's like their virtual boyfriend, is pretty much what he is. So there's always 300 people he can guarantee that if he says hello, they're going to go, hi, I love you. You know, I mean, there's that group of people. He's got this other batch. So what we're trying to find out right now is how for the girls to build that same thing. Because those young, giddy girls, you send it as a boy, you can take a picture of yourself, a selfie, I think they call it, and ship it off to them, and everybody loves it. When, uh, when pretty girls send pictures of themselves out, other girls are going, oh, who does she think she is? <laughs> you know, it's just weird how that works. My brother, who's been to Iraq and Afghanistan four times, said he would go back a fifth before raising his teenage daughters again. So that kind of tells me a little bit about the situation there. So, so a lot of what he does isn't going to work for the girls, but the same concept of building friendships and asking questions will if you learn to read and you learn to listen. So what he does, he gets up in the morning, and from his, here's his schedule, which is pretty ridiculous, but from 8 to 10, He's tweeting. Good morning, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? I'm great, thank you. So he's now responding back to every single one of these tweets that he gets. Hey, what are you guys doing today? Who's going to school? What are you? He just starts asking random questions. None of it's about his music. None of it's really about him yet. And I'm sitting there, he stayed with me, and my wife's cracking up laughing at this point. She goes, his job, he got up at 8 o'clock. Because he said, i got to get up at 8 and start tweeting. And my wife, who's not on Twitter, is like, what? So she just saw him, boom, 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 busting off this thing. All of a sudden, you just kind of see this engagement going. You see his activity going. So then what he did is, after he left Twitter, is he decided he does three cover videos a week on YouTube. And he posts them with purpose. And what he said was, is he said, most of... And he says, you guys, and he's talking to me about the clients I work, so I'm going to speak. Most of you guys, you create a video, you throw it up on Facebook, you put it up on YouTube, and you sit and you go, man, no one's commenting. I can't get any shares, I can't get any of this, I can't, you just kind of put it up there. He goes, Rick, that's where you're making the mistake. He says, you have to campaign. You have to build up to the launch. 
And that's another product that I'm working on. It's called the product launch formula that I'm spending a lot of time learning how to do with the music business. I said, well, what do you mean by that? He said, well, first off, he said, the way that Google, who owns YouTube, by the way, I didn't know if you guys were aware of that, they've changed things now. How, you know, you could sit there and you'll go, man, this guy's only got 12,000 views, but he's ranked higher than me and I have 100,000 views. Well, if you look at the comments and you look at the likes, so he said, here's the reason why we make a, a deal out of it. He said, what we'll do is I'll go ahead and on, we'll just use Thursday and Friday as an example. He said, on Thursday, I'll start teasing. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, I'm uploading a new video. Can't wait for you to see it. Then a couple hours later, he'll say pretty much the same thing. Why? Because not every person of his 97,000 people saw that tweet. Just because you tweet once doesn't mean that it was seen. You can tweet me right now, and by the time I get to my phone, it's not even on my front screen. So he's plastering this thing over and over and over again. He goes, hey, who's excited about the video tomorrow? Now he's asked a question, and the first person that says something, he's now engaging them in a conversation, and they're having this conversation building up to this next day at 7 o'clock. They're going to launch this video. So then what he does is he starts offering things. Hey, tomorrow I'm going to be there live answering your questions and DMing you, which is very popular amongst the kids these days, I guess. Uh, everybody likes to be DM, direct message. So what he does is he says, he does, I'll get back to that for a second. So he says, I'll DM you. So what he does is he's creating this event that they now know he's going to be attending. And he continues to build that. So what happens is, Soon as this thing, then he does the 15 minute countdown. And he, 14, 13, I mean, he does it on, he's doing these tweets. So right now, it's kind of popping out. Soon as that video went live, we did it at the house the other day, instantly, 330 something comments, these likes, these views. After about 332, YouTube has to repopulate itself. So don't freak out if you go, oh my gosh, it's been stuck at this number forever. I did something wrong. No, YouTube takes a little while to catch up. But as I'm watching this, I'm watching these comments, and you got to remember, when he asks a question and you respond back, that's two comments. So every time people were answering questions, he was just busting out this thing. So what happens is, as soon as other people start finding this video, it's got all these comments, it's got all these likes. He'll sit there and he'll say, hey, if I get 15 more likes, I'll do this. If I get this, I'll do this. And the more control you have of your fans, that's powerful. And it takes a while to build up to that. In the beginning, he was like, no, I'd get 30 comments, and I was stoked. You know? But he would celebrate those 30 comments, and he would love on those 30 people, and he would make them feel special, and then they continued to grow and grow and grow. So we sat there, and we watched this thing. And over like a 12-hour period of time, it was already up to like almost 7,500 plays, but it had over 4,000 likes. And that's because he spent time there. So the key is, make it an event. Even though you're going to say, wow, I only have like 12 people, then make it a party for 12. Okay? You've got to start somewhere. When Taylor and I started with MySpace, it was 10, then it was 100, then it was... It, it grows someplace. It's like everybody wants to be at the end. But they never want to run the race. They just want to show up at the finish line. Dun, 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 you know, and stand up on stage and get your trophy. No. Work. If you're young, if you're under, this is going to get personal now. If you're a female artist and you're under the age of 25 and you want to be an artist, raise your hand. Okay. Our most successful females right now, mid-20s. You got some time. Unlike Disney, that's not old here, okay? Guys who want to be artists that are under 30. Our most successful guys right now are in their late 20s, early 30s. They've been playing show after show after show after show after show in a van, sleeping three guys to a bed. I mean, you can hear the stories. There's time. You don't have to be in a hurry. That's where you start spending money you shouldn't spend, making decisions you shouldn't make, and limiting your opportunities. Because right now, as you can tell, this is a very crowded town. 
And unfortunately, we don't have enough spots on the rosters for all of you. So we're looking for reasons to say no so that we can move on to the next person. So you don't want to give them any reasons. You want to give them every reason to say yes and to want to partner with you on this. So how do you pick the YouTube videos? You go find iTunes Top 10, Billboard Top 10. Maybe you know a, a famous artist who the, you figure out what the next single is going to be, so you want to get a jump on it. Because right now, that's who people are searching on YouTube and Google. They're not searching for you. So you need to go find who they are searching for. Unfortunately, in the country music format, they're not searching a lot of our country artists right now as much as they're searching Bruno Mars and Katy Perry and things like that. So become a lover of music and start watching the charts. The Billboard pop songs seem to work real well. But put your spin on it, especially like Emma, you know, in the band. You guys got multiple instruments. Take a Bruno Mars song and throw a freaking mandolin and a banjo on it. Bruno ain't. You know, so it lets you put your own little spin on it. For those of you that don't play an instrument, that don't have the ability to go into a studio right now, go to karaoke-version.com. And you can buy the Pro Tool files, and you can go in, and it's a fully produced, and you can start taking out instruments. So if you want to have just acoustic guitar and a little percussion, you can make it sound, you can adjust the key for your voice. Unfortunately, when you go down to the karaoke bars, not a lot of times the songs aren't in your key, so it's really hurting you when you're trying to sing it. You can go to karaoke-version, and Jared and them provide that at their studio. You could go into their studio, we walked in, and uh, Maya played her own music. Jared and then put a little percussion, made some great little things. There's another guy that I'm working with right now that I just found. Uh, he can duplicate almost any track in any key, and he does it for like 100 to 150 bucks. He did them all for Austin Mahone and a lot of those YouTube kids. That's who they use. They'll go to this guy, and he'll just pop that stuff out. And there's, there's resources available for you. So... The key is to constantly be putting this stuff out there. Now, for those of you that are taking notes, let me tell you how to properly describe your YouTube video in the title. Okay? For those of you that don't get this, Will's recording, I'm recording, we'll make this available to everybody here if you get signed up on the list. So if you didn't get a chance to take notes, you can go back and watch the video. Inside Google, inside YouTube, most of the time, people will search for the title of the song first. So the first thing that you want in the title, we're going to talk title first, we'll talk description second, parentheses, name of the song, parentheses, the artist, then if it's an acoustic cover, you can even say original acoustic cover because it's your original acoustic cover, and then your name. So if, if it's a piano version, acoustic cover, whatever you want to say. So parentheses, name of the song, the artist, what it is, and then you. Okay? So that's kind of how they're going to do it. So then what we're going to do is we're going to figure out a call to action. Because in the description, it only shows a few lines, if you know. And then it hits that little button that says show more. And not... Most people don't go down into the show more. Do you? If you do, great. And most people don't. So you want to get your call to action in that top description. So what I suggest you do is find one place that you want to send somebody. When have you ever clicked on it, gone to that other place, went back to click on the next thing, to go to the place, to go... The fans don't either. We keep asking people to do things that we don't do. Stupid. It really is. I mean, and I, I, I say that out of all due respect, but at some point we have to get, we have to treat them the way we want to be treated, and we can't expect them to do things that we wouldn't do themselves, because I think it's fair to say everyone in here is a lover of music and has gone to an artist's website, and I have not gone and clicked on every single page and read every single thing or a four-page bio or but that's what we put on our websites. So let's stop that. Okay, so let's get what we got. So in the description, 
for the people that I work with and what I teach is I want to call to action, which means they get to go do something and receive something of value. So we'll say, for example, for free music, go to then the artist website. If you only have Twitter right now, send them to Twitter. But everything that I encourage the artists that I work with to do starts at the website. Why? Because you own it. Remember we talked about that? We sent them to a place that you own. Now you control the message. See, some of you haven't realized yet that you don't control the message on Facebook. Facebook controls the message. And unless people are commenting on a lot of your stuff, a lot of the posts that you post aren't even being seen by your followers. Because Facebook only wants to put up quality content because that's what their advertisers are paying for is the visit sites that are visited often. So get them there to your music. Maybe put, you don't have to go in and describe what the video is. They've already found it. Most people waste the time describing what they're about to see. This is me at Aunt Sally's and she loves Dirk's Bentley and this is me doing the Dirk's Bentley. But who cares? Besides you and Aunt Sally, you know? So get something in there. So what we like to do below the line is we'll put for seven free songs, go to the website. Then you can also show them you're on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter at. Then maybe something else. Then I go space, space, which now gets me into the bottom part, which nobody really looks at. And I go to Google and I type in lyrics for Roar. And I go and I cut and paste and I plaster those lyrics because people are also searching for lyrics. Then I go down below that and I go to Google and type in Katy Perry Roar. And the top 10 things that show up, I just cut and paste it and dump that in there. It looks all Japanese and stuff, but that's what Google says are the top 10 things that are being searched. So why not put that in your description down at the bottom? I've never read a comment that said, hey, what's all that crap at the bottom of your description? Nobody's ever asked. They just don't. So that's what I do, and that's what I teach, and that's what I'm finding out these other folks are doing. Why? Because they learned that the description are for the little spiders that Google hands out there trying to, hey, somebody searched Lily Nelson. Whoa, it says Lily Nelson here. You know, it just kind of gets a chance to go look around and stuff. So those are the things that we do in the description. Those are the things that you want to do when picking out your YouTube videos. Make them an event. Make sure that when you're sending it, setting it up. I always like to use the, I, the uh, Apple analogy. How many of you have the iPhone 5? Or iPhone 4, whatever. Okay, soon there's going to be the iPhone 5S. And what's going to happen? Somebody's going to mysteriously get a picture. And they're going to post it on the internet. And then a blogger is going to mysteriously get all the new features, and he's going to post it on his blog. That's Apple leaking the pictures, that's Apple leaking the information to the bloggers, and then there's going to be this campaign over a couple months, and then a bunch of us are going to sit outside the freaking Mac store at 5 o'clock in the morning to be the first guy to get the new iPhone 5S so we can tell all our buddies we have the new iPhone 5S. What if we could make that same kind of claim for your music? For anything that you do, it's all in the setup, it's all in the delivery, it's all in taking care of these people beforehand. Now, a lot of these things that you're going to try aren't going to instantly just, Whoa, you know, magically give you these huge followings. But if you start doing this stuff consistently, it will help. Okay? A lot of these people coming off these TV shows, you would think, instant, man, they won the X Factor. Ask Tate how that's worked out for him so far. Five million dollars was cool. First song on the radio didn't get out of the 50s. And that guy had millions, millions of people voting for him. Simon showed us every week, this is how many people voted for Tate. They never captured those people and taught Tate how to communicate with those people and taught him how to build a relationship with those people so that when Tate's record went to the store, Tate could then invite his millions of friends that helped him win this great contest to get them over to the Apple Store to buy his music. That's what I want to challenge you to do. That's what this book challenges you to do and teaches you and shares stories and things. So that's the stuff that it's... it's it's great that we all of a sudden think that someone's just going to walk up and make us a star, and I pray and hope that that happens for each and every one of you. 
I really do. When it does, please call me. And if you get like a gold or platinum record, send one to me. I'll put it on my wall. Because you were here once. But the chances of that happening aren't real good. But there is a store that's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, with people that are looking for music. You've just got to help them find yours. And when they find you, love them and keep them. And don't let them get away. And don't take them for granted. And don't put up crap on your YouTube pages and your websites. You know, if someone says, hey, here's my email. You have the freedom to contact me whenever you want. Don't abuse that privilege. Because that's what it is. It's a privilege. We call it permission marketing. Seth Godin talks about it the best. Twitter and Facebook is not permission marketing. That's just kind of noise. And as we know, there's a lot of noise. The analogy I like to use is that we're at LP Field, and everybody who has a CD is sitting inside LP Field. How many CDs do you think are being made as we're talking right now in the United States of America and in the world? Lots. So if there's 78,000 people standing in LP Field holding up their CD, how can you stand out in that? But then when we ask the question, would everybody in LP Field who also plays 100 shows a year please step into the next field? Then all of a sudden that field gets smaller. Would everybody in that field that has 100,000 CDs that sold 30,000 copies last year at live shows please move into the next field? All of a sudden that number's getting smaller. Now it's a field and now all of a sudden the people who have the money are kind of starting to look at it. Would you go and you move them into the next field, and then you move them into the next field, and then you've got about 100 people left standing. That's where you want to get to. Because then you've got a chance to sit there and say, okay, all that is noise. I'm a business. This is what I've been doing over the X number of years to make myself worthy to partner with you. And you'll always hear me talk about partnerships. Partners make more money than employees. They get to make and have better decisions. They make better decisions when they're a partner because they bring something to the table. An employee is just a worker. And an employee may or may not ever get called upon to work. That's the sad part about this town, is just because you get a deal doesn't mean that you've ever released a, you get to ever release a song to radio. Here's what's weird. They can sign a three album deal with you and drop you. You're not guaranteed to get three records, but I'll tell you what, if you're moving it, they're going to make sure they get all the records out of you they possibly can. Go ask Tim McGraw. They kept adding records to his deal just magically the way that that happened. And then he ended up having to go to court to fix that. So you want to put yourself in a position to where you are the one helping make the decisions on your career. And the only way to do that is to continue educating yourself, continue asking questions, doing things the right way. With your Twitter, if you could tweet in the beginning 10, 15 times a day, and that's, that counts as with replies and comments, all of a sudden, more people will start following you. I guarantee you, you will watch your followers grow. There's this thing that's free. It's called justunfollow.com. It's an app. You can go in, get rid of people on your Twitter following that have not tweeted in a while. You can flush them out. You can clean them up. There's a thing called follow friends of. Like if you... Or think you're with Taylor Swift, you could go at Taylor Swift 13, it'll list all of her fans. You can do what a lot of people are doing right now, which I really believe in. It's called follow for follow. You go out and follow a whole bunch of people, give them the chance to follow you back. If they don't follow you back in 48 hours, dump them and move on to another batch, follow a couple hundred people, see who comes in. Everybody who follows you back, send them a thank you, but not the not the canned cut. You're in a position right now to communicate with your fans. Take advantage of that. Hey, I just followed you. Hey, you know, I really appreciate that. You know, hey, hey, what do you do? You know, it's like, that's why I have Rick Barker music inside my thing so people can go, oh, music. Must be in the music thing. So if some of you still haven't quite set up yourself yet, the best thing is to get yourname.com if you can get it. If you can't, get yourname.music.com. If you can get your name music at Twitter and your name music and the reason why I suggest that not everybody will and no everybody's got their different reasons is because when you post anywhere the word music 
shows up. If Rick Barker shows up, they have no idea what I'm involved in. But if Rick Barker music shows up, I may be able to snag a couple. So if you didn't do that, I'm not saying you did it wrong. I'm just saying for me, I've given the chance for a lot of artists. I think now knowing the deal, we would do that. Some people screwed up trying to get all clever on only things that them and their friends knew and they built this following and that really makes no sense what they got going on there. But you got a chance to fix that right now. What I'd like to do is the first person, not Trinidad. Uh, you know what? I'm going to just give this to somebody. Ben, since you came in and told me you found out about this on David's Twitter and that you listened to the show him and I did, I'd like to give you this book. Okay, do you have it already? Okay, good. Ben's a student at Belmont as well. This is, this is your master's degree.